Are you looking for some uh, day one decks for Dr. Boom's incredible inventions mini set? Then look no further than this video. We will be covering 11 decks, one for each class, and a wide variety of different play styles, which means there should be at least one deck for every type of player. So let's begin. The first one is going to be Reno Hand Buff Rainbow DK. The idea behind this is we're going to be using Reno Jackson as a way to have additional control in a rainbow style of DK list, we're where we're going to be trying to use Climatic Necrotic Explosion as best as possible using new cards like Foam Render in order to feed into it. We also are going to be buffing up some of our minions because we do have a lot of cards that will buff up things like Volturer here and then finishing off our opponent with really cheap undead minions. This deck should be incredibly flexible on what it wants to do as it can win through either the explosion at the end of the game or just by controlling the board state long enough where your opponent can't do anything. Also worth mentioning for Zilliax, we are going to be using win module and perfect module just as additional survivability tool. The next deck is for Demon Hunter, which is going to be big demon demon hunter centered around Illidari Inquisitor. This will allow us to get up to 32 points of damage using the Replicator, which is a very powerful card within this mini set. As long as we have the Gigantic version of this card, we should be able to get additional copies of Inquisitor pretty easily, while relying on some of the mana discount that we'll be getting through things like Argus that can be discounted off of the Replicator, or even Raging Fell Screamers to discount them even further. Essentially, this is going to play very similar to Shopper DH that was floating around a little while ago, but with a little bit of an additional twist for late into the game. Now let's get on to the next step, which is going to be Shuffle Train Druid. The idea behind this is because we now have the brand new card, Overgrowth Beanstalk, we should have additional draw power that will allow us to easily make full advantage off of Sky Mother Aviana that will put a bunch of one cost cards into our deck that we can then discount with in Smolin, allowing us to also make use of the shuffle package of Gaslight Gatekeeper and Playhouse Giant in order to swarm the board with a bunch of high attack minions that are very annoying to get rid of. This also acts as a way to have additional survivability using Pennant of Earth since this will always heal for at least 20 HP. And now for the next, which is going to be Secret Hunter. The idea behind this is we are going to be using Project 9, the new legendary from the mini set that recasts every friendly secret that has been triggered this game, allowing us to get additional copies through Mysterious Egg, essentially allowing us to infinitely reset whatever secrets we randomly discover off of Observer of Mysteries or Titan Forge Trap, and then also using the token generating package early on in the game as a way to get a bunch of beasts so we can overwhelm our opponent through both control and swarming capabilities. Now for the next deck, which is Rainbow Mage, sent around the new card Dark Moon Magician, which will cast a spell that costs one more than any other spell that we cast ourselves, making it where Yog in a Box basically becomes a 50-50 chance between Sunset Volley and the Scourge, allowing us to overwhelm our opponent by swarming either the board or doing a bunch of face damage in a single turn. And we also have the backup plan of Sif in order to OTK our opponent if we really need to, or even the Mesadune into Ragnaros combo, where we should be able to get up to 24 points of damage in a single turn Ragnaros off of Mesadune, which should be pretty easy since it is the only elemental in the entire list. For the next class, we got Paladin, which is going to be a no spell Paladin, aka Holy Glow Stick Paladin, where we're essentially only going to be running Holy Glow Sticks, and then all the other cards in our deck are going to be generating additional Holy Spells, so we can easily trigger this or allow us to draw into our additional copies pretty easily using Dry Scale Deputy as a way to get up to four copies of this and then use Fizzle as a way to get an additional four afterwards, allowing us to OTK our opponent by using Blood Mage Thalios. I think this is probably the most meme out of all the lists that I came up with, but it should be a lot of fun to try out, which is the reason why I went with this list. 
And now for Priest, we have Res Priest with the new support card, a delayed product. We'll, we'll discover a random eight or more cost minion, then it goes dormant for two turns. However, we're going to be infinitely reviving this off of our Lesser Diamond Spellstone, making it where we should be able to choose a minion that has either a powerful onboard effect or a powerful death rattle in order to overwhelm our opponent with an infinite reviving board that they won't be able to do anything with. We're also going to be using Fizzle as a way to get additional copies of Lesser Diamond Spellstone and hopefully getting additional copies of him through things like Creation Protocol. Overall, this deck hopes to control the board state as long as you can keep reviving your board. And now for the next step, which is going to be Free Bird Rogue, centered around the fact that we can use Gaslight Gatekeeper in order to get additional copies through Dorian, and then using these one cost copies in order to get zero cost copies off of Sonia. This should allow us to overwhelm our opponent with a bunch of charge minions that they will not be able to do anything against while also having backup plans of the weapon package that has been catching on within a rogue. This is the idea for a rogue deck that I've been wanting to revisit for a while now, but I haven't had a good enough reason, but Puppeteer should be good enough to make this free bird combo feel pretty free for us in order to overwhelm our opponent. Now for the next class, it will be Shutterblock Shaman in order to triple the effect of Wish Upon the Star that we will be drawing off of Hagatha the Fable and then buffing up our Murloc Grofin in order to get a incredibly wide board of incredibly big minions. If we use this card in combination with a Shutter Block we will be able to get 32, 32 worth of stats on turn 8 which is actually quite insane and even if our opponent gets rid of that we should be able to slam down another murloc glowfin combo on the next turn using the miniaturized version of shutter block and we're also going to be buffing up these minions thus making it pretty hard for our opponent to actually deal with it we do have a lot of charge minions and a lot of ways to do direct damage to our opponent's face so this deck should be quite flexible and now for Warrior, one of the decks that I'm most excited to try to play out, and I will probably be playing this later tonight on stream. This is going to be Bomb Warrior. Bomb Warrior is going to be centered around the new card Safety Expert, which will be able to be discounted through things like Chemical Spill or Part Scrapper. In theory, you can actually get a Safety Expert out on turn 4 if you if over turn 2 and 3 you chain both copies of part scrapper and safety goggles to discount the card to zero. This should force your opponent to panic pretty easily because it turns out having an 8-8 on turn 4 is actually pretty strong, especially with one with such a powerful bow cry. Though I am a little bit worried with the fact that there are only really two bomb cards within standard, I do think this deck has a lot of potential and it's why I'm really excited for this mini set. And now for the final deck, which is going to be in Sandy Warlock using both the new cards of Domino Effect and Mass Production. This will allow us to buff up our Crescendo much higher than before, thus making it very easy to OTK our opponent by slamming down a Crescendo that will be infinitely buffed up through our Mass Productions that we can prevent ourselves from taking fatigue damage through both Void Virtuoso and Fell String Harp. Alright, so those were all the decks that I prepared for day one of Dr. Boom's Incredible Inventions. Let me know which deck you're most excited to try out down below. Honestly speaking, as I mentioned before, Bomb Warrior is probably where I'm going to start with this. And then probably going into Secret Hunter, just because both of those decks feel like something that are straight up my alley for both wackiness and playability but like always if you enjoyed the video please like comment and subscribe and next time bye bye